Welcome to the Worship of God at First Church in Glastonbury, Connecticut. We are an open, welcoming, and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, which means this. You are welcome here. You are safe to sing or laugh or shed a tear. You are welcome here if you are happy or sad, confused or inspired, full of faith or full of questions, young or old, poetic or pragmatic, or a combination of all of these things. You are welcome in our community, no matter your religion, your ethnicity, who you love, where you grew up, how much money you have, or the color of your skin. For here, we proclaim that each person is valuable, loved, and essential. This is a place of peace and grace where all God's children have a home. Here, all are loved and no one stands alone. You are welcome here. All are welcome here. Yes, welcome to this worship of God here at First Church in Glastonbury, Connecticut. First Church is an open, welcoming, and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, and we are so glad you are here worshiping with us. We pray that this service brings you peace at a time when our world is so very troubled. We worship together to be comforted, to be inspired, and to remember that each and every one of us are amazingly loved, no matter who we are or where we are on life's journey. Perhaps this is your first time worshiping here with us, or maybe you've been here to this sacred place many times before. Regardless, we hope that you feel connected to the compassion and to the mission of our congregation. Our community is one that focuses on inclusion and generosity, love, service, and gratitude. We'd like to take this time to highlight for you a few of the important things happening within our congregation right now. Our first church outside hiking group continues to foray out into God's amazing creation each weekend. First church outside has also sponsored and put together a virtual photo gallery with submissions from across our church community that capture the beauty of springtime. The slideshow is available to view on the church website, and we encourage you to take a look at our beautiful images. On May the 2nd, our church school is gathering outside on the Micah Chapel lawn at 10 a.m. for a pirate party as part of our church school unit, Dig Into the Bible. And if you're a new face here at church, and you are interested in becoming a member here, there is a prospective member meeting on May 2nd, also outside from 11.30 to 12.30 on the Micah Chapel lawn. All are welcome to attend. And our monthly food collections have been simply amazing because of your generosity. We have another one coming up on May 7th, and all the items donated will go to Manchester Area Conference of Churches. You can drop off your food at the church, or a pickup can be arranged. Indeed, we are truly blessed by the generosity of this congregation. The gifts of all of you to our Easter offering have totaled nearly $25,000, which goes to our partner Youth Mission Camp Heads Up Hartford, as well as to One Great Hour of Sharing to support the work that they do across the United States and the world to meet human needs. Thank you for all of you who continue to send your pledges and your weekly offerings, including through online and electronic giving. Your gifts allow our church to continue to do all of our important ministry. And as always, we encourage you to check out your reminder and our weekly church email blasts for information about what's happening here and how you can be involved. We invite you to engage in the learning, the fellowship, the love, the growing, and the service that happens here at First Church. And now, please join me in our opening prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to lift our voices to you. We remember all that you have done for us with grateful hearts. We remember times of joy and times of sorrow, and we pray that these experiences make us compassionate toward others. We share the memory of your people, Holy One, as they have journeyed through time, and we acknowledge this is our story as well. 
May the richness of our faith inspire us to be loving, faithful, and justice-seeking disciples in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus, our friend and brother. Together as the body of Christ, we say the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I now invite you to join in singing our first hymn, Love Divine, All Love Excelling. David and Smokey the Bear. We're here because Miss Lauren and Mrs. Bear asked us if we would do the children's message for today. We think they're off having some well-deserved vacation time. We're not exactly sure where they are, but we think it might be Adventure Island. You know, that's the theme of this year's Vacation Bible School. And last week, Mrs. Bear had on a hat and sunglasses, maybe even a bathing suit. So we think they're spending some time at Adventure Island. But in any case, Mrs. Bear asked Smokey if he'd be willing to help do the children's message for this weekend. Now, Smokey the Bear is very old, about 70 years old, and the belt buckle is broken and Smokey's a little bit worn. So Smokey was a little bit timid, even a little bit shy, thinking he might be too old for the children's message. But I said, oh no, being old can be very, very special. I bet some of you boys and girls have some things at home that are old and maybe very special to you. Maybe it is a stuffed animal, maybe it's an old blanket, or a special old book, or maybe a sweatshirt that's old and comfortable. Whatever it is, being old can be very, very special. So I reassured Smokey that he's up on the top shelf of my bookcase in my study, 
because I have a lot of other old special things there. And I want to share with you boys and girls some of those things. One thing is, do you recognize it? It's a golf club. Now maybe your parents or grandparents or great grandparents play golf. I bet they don't play golf with a 100 year old club. This is 100 years old, 1921. It was bought and made in St. Andrews, Scotland for my grandfather. I have played with it, not very well, but the hickory shaft is beautiful and it's called a niblick. You can ask your parents what a niblick is. Another old thing I have, not quite as old, is Mickey Mouse. This is only about 45 years old. Mickey Mouse was made in the 1970s. Listen. Oh boy. That tickles. One more. See you real soon. So a wonderful old Mickey that I keep up in my study. Also on that same shelf, I have two Christmas ornaments that are very special, not quite as old, only about 25 years old, made by my daughters, Emily and Meg. This hanging Christmas tree ornament, and then this pine cone decorated like a Christmas tree. So these are very, very special to me, even though they're old. Another thing that's special is this. You might not even recognize this. It's a camera. It still takes good pictures. I don't use it very often. But you know, I wonder, could this also be, let's see, could it also be a phone? Hello? Hello? No, I guess not. Only a camera. The final thing I have here is a very old book, about 200 years old. Any guesses, boys and girls, what the book is? Good guess. It's the Bible. And even though this Bible is old and the story that's contained in it is very, very old, in fact, thousands of years old, the story of the Bible is the story of God's love for this world and God's love for us so much that he sent his son Jesus to come love us and teach us how to love God, how to love one another, and to how to love the world. So even though the story of God's love is very, very old, it is a very, very special story. So thank you boys and girls for joining Smokey the Bear and I for this children's message. And as always, please remember that we love you, First Church loves you, Smokey the Bear loves you, and of course, God loves you. And now, if you would stand up and give your family, adult member, or friend a big hug and say, may the good news of God's love be with you. Let us pass the peace.
mighty creator and God of all beings, today we gather as your people to praise you and the love you bring into this world. You have shared your son, Jesus Christ, with us and bestowed upon us a legacy to be your disciples and your followers. God, if we're being honest with you and with ourselves, sometimes we wrestle with what that means. In our world, we are too often consumed with racial tension, violence, bigotry, hunger, loss, and suffering. We need the ministry of Jesus Christ. We note that this Sunday is Pacific Islander and Asian American Ministries Sunday, a time when we celebrate the diversity of your creation. We honor that diversity and the diversity of presences that Jesus offers us as faithful disciples. Lord, make us more like the merciful Jesus, the one who refused to cast the first stone. Our world has too many opportunities to judge and to castigate others. Remind us that Jesus was merciful when we face the trials of this world, especially when we exercise power over others. Make us more like the righteous Jesus who confronted the Pharisees and challenged ways of thinking that put orthodoxy ahead of the needs of people. Foster in us a sense of right and wrong, remembering always that you create all good things and that you desire for us to love and protect them. Let us be righteous when we see the hungry, the unsheltered, the caged migrant child, and strengthen us to always see the divine spark in each person. Make us more like the angry Jesus God, who overturned tables in the temple. Remind us that anger has a place in this world when we see senseless and repeated mass shootings. Let us embody our anger into sacred indignation when too little changes. Make us more like the suffering Jesus, unafraid to act out of bountiful love, treasuring the lives and the love of our neighbors near and far. Let us take the mantle of this world's suffering upon ourselves in pursuit of the freedom and justice and liberation of all people. Let us bear the indignations of this world with tremendous compassion as Christ's disciples. Make us more like the healing Jesus who lovingly embraced and cared for the sick, the elderly, and the differently abled. In this time of global pandemic, encourage us to take the precautions necessary to care for our neighbors. Be with us in our moments of loneliness, our moments of loss. Let us be people who celebrate your resurrection message. God, make us more like the welcoming Jesus who humanized the stranger and the outsider. Let us be people of extravagant welcome who are more bothered by one being excluded than by what others might think of us for extending a welcoming hand. At a time when we face a worldwide refugee crisis, make us vessels of your hospitality. Make us more like the teaching Jesus, striving every day to share a message of peace and agape. Let us seek to always learn, to always see you, to always reveal your wisdom and your love in this world. Allow us to be the peacemakers that this world needs. All thanks and praise to you, Holy One, who blesses and nourishes. We are tremendously loved, and we bring forth into this world manifestations of your love which grow from our gratitude. We seek your comfort in our challenging moments and rejoice in the joy you bring to us. We celebrate the name of Jesus Christ, whom you have given to us, your people. We seek each day to be more like the disciples you call us to be. To your message and to your work, let us be faithful. Amen. As many of you know, my family went to church every week when I was a kid. There was no question. Yet I have no recollection of ever celebrating Good Shepherd Sunday, which is the fourth Sunday after Easter. 
The Good Shepherd reading you will soon hear from the Gospel of John seems a bit out of place in my humble opinion because it takes us back in time before the passion and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. But perhaps on the other hand, it is the perfect message for just a few weeks after Easter. This Good Shepherd passage has its background with it in a story right before about a blind man. Jesus heals the blind man, which causes a controversy with the Pharisees since they tried to discredit Jesus on a regular basis. You see, they didn't want their authority threatened by this guy named Jesus. Jesus then uses various pastoral metaphors about sheep and gatekeepers and the gate of the sheepfold, identifying himself first as the gate of the sheepfold and then as the good shepherd. Jesus contrasts himself with thieves and bandits who do not enter by the gate and strangers whom the sheep refuse to follow. Then he compares himself with the hired hand, who is supposed to take care of the sheep, but who only really cares about himself. Jesus is reminding the people of his day that he is the one that truly cares and loves and guides. One of the other assigned lectionary readings for this Good Shepherd Sunday is the passage we will soon hear from 1 John, Theologians often refer to this as a pastoral letter to churches in conflict. For many, this passage seems like a sermon. If we listen to the words in 1 John, there are clear instructions on how we are called to live by following the commandments to love. No surprise there, right? In this reading, the connection between our love for each other and Christ's love for us is quite obvious. And concretely, such love means living out what we preach or what we say. The truisms are often quoted because there's truth in them. Practice what you preach. Walk the walk. Don't just talk the talk. And as Jesus says it, Dear children, let us love, not just in word or speech, but in truth and action. Hear now these inspired and holy words. Our first reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 10. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. And our second reading comes from the first letter of John, chapter 3. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a person in need and yet refuses help. My dear children, let us love not just in word or speech, but in truth and in action. Let's practice real love. This is the only way we'll know we're truly living, living in God's reality. For God is greater than our worried hearts and knows more about us than we do ourselves. Once that's taken care of, we're bold and free before God. We're able to stretch our hands out and receive what we asked for because we're doing what he said, doing what pleases him. 
And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. As we keep his commands, we live deeply and surely in him, and he lives in us. And this is how we experience his deep and abiding presence in us, by the spirit that he gave to us. May God add a special blessing to each of these words. Practice what you preach. I try really hard to live by these words. As many of you know, I was blessed to grow up in a family and in a church community where words mattered and actions mattered, and luckily the two matched. Stand up for what is right, even if you're standing alone. Do one good deed every day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Every person matters. A couple of years ago, I read a sermon by Reverend John Brink, and I recently looked it up again. John's sister-in-law, Tracy, was a teacher's aide at the time. Her special assignment was in a second grade classroom and was giving much needed attention to kids with autism. Many of the kids in her class faced challenges at home, living in tough neighborhoods and sometimes difficult family situations. It was November when Tracy was checking the backpack of one particular little boy and realized that every paper that had been sent home since September was still in his backpack untouched and unread. He had been squirreling away food in there too because sometimes there wasn't enough food at home, she guessed, and the backpack had turned moldy. Tracy didn't ask any questions, went out and bought another backpack and gave it to the little boy and said it was provided by the school. Another boy didn't have a toothbrush at home, and Tracy could see that his baby teeth were in bad shape. She brought in a toothbrush and toothpaste for him to have at school. Some days, Tracy would leave her classroom of beloved children frustrated. She found it hard to feel that she was having any impact on these little lives when there was so much outside of school that seemed to work against any progress made. But as Tracy looked at their faces, and especially the eyes of those beautiful, beloved children, she realized her job was to shepherd them through their school day, offering care and guidance and support, and a friendly smile and some love. Tracy realized if she could help make the school day the best it could be, that was enough. As Pastor John wrote, Tracy is doing just what Jesus calls us to do. She has created the community of care and concern in her little classroom, in her school. In this scripture, Jesus calls us to be the ones to open our hands and our hearts to others, to care for them, to welcome and protect them, no matter how the journey is going. As Jesus, the good shepherd, led and taught with his life, no one is past, no one is unworthy. Jesus uses this metaphor of the shepherd because it speaks directly to the people of his time. They understood the relationship between a shepherd and sheep. The shepherd provided protection and guidance and care. Every sheep matters. Every person matters. The shepherd would seek those who wandered away and bring them back to the fold. Jesus speaks first about the nature of the sheepfold, a place where the shepherds gathered their flocks overnight, where the intimacy of knowing and being known was experienced, where the shared protection of walls and other shepherds 
ensured the flock was safe. The sheepfold was a place of welcome, community, security, and yes, rest. This is our vision of what a church should be, a place of welcome, community, security, and yes, rest. A place where each member is cared for and known by name. It was over a decade ago when Gloria McAdam preached here at First Church. For some, Gloria's name is familiar, for others, not so much. Gloria was one of the founders of Food Share, and starting in 1982 and extending for three decades, she was the president and CEO of Food Share. The nonprofit grew tremendously under her because she had a passion and a care and concern for those who were hungry. Before that Sunday morning when Gloria was to preach, I had heard her name and seen her picture, but I had never met her. Gloria's passion and love came out in her words she shared that morning, and I still remember one of the stories that she told. It took place when she was in her early 20s, I believe, and she was outside throwing something away in the dumpster by her apartment, and she saw a gruffy man. He looked kind of upset and unkempt. She immediately started making up a story in her head about his life, and she kind of coached herself to stay away from him. But as she approached the dumpster, the man started talking to her in a sweet and gentle voice. She ended up speaking to him for a few minutes and learning about his life. Many hardships. But Gloria says she remembered his positive spirit. In her sermon, Gloria reflected on how she judged that man, and yet her faith calls her to reach out to the stranger, the forgotten, the disheveled, the lost, the lonely. She encouraged us to see Jesus in everyone and to always offer kindness and love, even to those who look or act different. She challenged our congregation, our beloved community, to open its doors wider and to reach out more often. Unfortunately, Gloria died in January 2019 at the early age of 62 of brain cancer. Fortunately, she leaves behind a legacy of acceptance, dedication, and love. Gloria was a woman who practiced what she preached. She fostered children, gave her heart and soul to feeding those who were hungry, and she was active in her church community. She created connections, shared her passion, and inspired people with her story, and still inspires people with her life. Sometimes we need people in our lives to remind us that we are called to be people of welcome, connection, and love. Sounds so simple, right? And sometimes we need a reminder that we are the sheep and we have a leader in Jesus who can guide and comfort and love us all the days of our lives. Let's be honest. Right now it feels like some of us need reassurance, compassion, and guidance. Many of us are exhausted. The world is a scary and troubling place, and we are sick of COVID, frustrated with the injustice and violence all around us, and sometimes the problems in our personal lives threaten to overwhelm us. The lectionary passages that were read during this service are comforting and healing and good reminders. Earlier this week, I had a church meeting, and the devotion was refreshing and inspiring. You see, I'm a member of the Hartford East Association Executive Council, along with church members Mitzi Baker and Dan Martin. 
The work that this council does is important and sacred, although sometimes it feels tiring and exhausting. It is the work of supporting our association churches, clergy, and members in discernment, in which we have two in this congregation, Kim Sirio, who preached a few weeks ago, and Andrew Wicks. For our opening devotion on Thursday, one of my colleagues, Kelly Jane, the pastor at First Church in East Hartford, shared a simple and powerful spoken and visual prayer. As we end this time of reflection, I invite you to keep your eyes open during this prayer. May these words and images remind you that no matter who you are, that you are loved. I pray that these words and images challenge you to keep working to bring peace and justice and love into our community and our world to practice what we preach. And I hope that these words and images might soothe your soul, inspire your heart, and comfort your mind. Let us pray. O Creator, our Creator, we come to you in prayer. You carry us through trials. And dance with us in the joy of the morning. You lead us to serve others. and covenant in love with one another. By the power of your Holy Spirit, may we follow your call for the church. Amen. And now let us join in our closing hymn, O Jesus, I Have Promised. Let us now go forth into the world in peace, to be of good courage, to hold fast to that which is good, to render to no one evil for evil, to strengthen the faint-hearted, to support the weak, to help the afflicted, 
to rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When I was in seminary, the Naples, Florida UCC Church gave me a generous scholarship. They had never met me, but I wrote them a letter each semester to update them on what classes I had taken and how I was doing. Even 12 years after graduation, I still receive their emails and newsletters, and I love reading them. They are a faithful, generous, and loving congregation, and several of our church members attend there when they are in Florida during the winter months. Just a few days ago, I received an email. I think it was the Holy Spirit, because it had this prayer at the end of it. Jesus, you are good and wise. I will praise you when I rise. Jesus, hear this prayer I send. Bless my family and my friends. Jesus, help my eyes to see all the good you send to me. Jesus, help my ears to hear calls for help from far and near. Jesus, help my feet to go in the way that you will show. Jesus, help my hands to do all things loving, kind, and true. Jesus, guard me through this day in all I do and all I say. Amen. Friends, let us always be comforted and inspired by Jesus to do the sacred and holy work of sharing God's love in this world. Amen.